In May of 1977, shooting began in and around Culver City, California, on a movie that was destined to become, if not the king, then the power behind the throne of embarrassingly bad movies. That movie was called Rabbit Test. Rabbit Test was the theatrical debut of Billy Crystal, directed by none other than comedian Joan Rivers. <laughs> Always loved Joan Rivers. She could be sassy. <laughs> anyway, this was the only movie she directed in her long and storied career. You may be wondering, just what is a rabbit test? Well, it used to be, back in the day, if a woman wanted a pregnancy test, they didn't have the kits that you can buy now. No, she had to go to her doctor. What the doctor had to do was take some samples, and these were injected into a rabbit, and if the rabbit died, the woman was Prager's. I know, it sounds like some 19th century quack medicine, but it really was how they tested for pregnancy back in the day. So, movies or shows from the 60s and 70s that's what it means when they reference a rabbit died, or a rabbit test. The plot of Rabbit Test is that virgin Lionel Carpenter, played by Billy Crystal, has a one-time hookup to lose his innocence. A few weeks later, he discovers he has become the world's first pregnant man, and goes through all the stages of pregnancy like morning sickness. This sets off a comic series of events that affects the entire world, including a group of Russian gypsies who think he's the chosen one. So this kind of a story used to be just a funny, quirky, roll-reversal, turn-the-tables type of story. But I guess nowadays it's become some kind of sick, disgusting, pregnancy fetish thing. Thanks, Internet. So, trust me, you, 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 you don't want to know. Don't, don't, don't Google it. Don't, don't Google it. Trust, trust me, just don't, okay? Ugh. Anyway, for those of us who grew up normal, the movie had a lot going for it, including star power. The cast is a veritable who's who of both then stars, future stars, and character actors. So, while you may not know all of their names, you've almost certainly seen these people in other things. For example, besides Billy Crystal, Rabbit Test also has Michael Keaton in his first credited movie role. Just a bit part as a sailor, and you need to look fast to see him, but he's in it. So, let's take a look at the cast. Who's in this thing? Better tell Grandma to tie down her wig. Cause here we go. First, there's Billy Crystal, of course, and the aforementioned Michael Keaton. Joan Prather was in The Deer Slayer and Eight is Enough. Alex Rocco was in The Godfather, The Facts of Life, and did a lot of TV. Doris Roberts was in Everybody Loves Raymond, Christmas Vacation, Remington Steel, lot of stuff. Billy Barty, he was in Willow, Legend, just about everything, lots of stuff, you know Billy Barty. Peggy Blow did a lot of TV appearances. 
William Calloway. He voiced a lot of cartoons, including Super Friends, The Incredible Hulk. He did some voices on that TV show. He did voices for G.I. Joe, and he was the voice of Clumsy Smurf. Hamilton Camp, lot of voice work. He was Gizmo Duck on Darkwing Duck. He played Greedy Smurf. He was in lots of stuff. Charles Cooper, you know him as General Cord in Star Trek V. Patience Cleveland, she did a lot of TV. She was on Green Acres. She also was in Psycho 3. She was the old lady in Donnie Darko. Imogene Coca, she did lots of TV. She was in Sid Caesar's Show of Shows. She starred in Grindel, and she was in National Lampoon's Vacation. Valerie Curtin, she was the star witness in All the President's Men. She starred in the 9 to 5 uh, TV show. She was in Mother, Jugs and Speed and Silver Streak. Keen Curtis, he was in The Magician, The Pretender, Lou Grant, he was the narrator for Space Ghost, did lots of stuff for TV, lots of voices. Francis DeSales, did a lot of TV, he was on Perry Mason, Ozzie and Harriet, he's in Tora Tora Tora, and he played a surgeon in Jailhouse Rock. Faye DeWitt, she was in The Reluctant Astronaut, did a lot of one-off appearances in TV shows. Richard Deacon, he did lots of movies and TV, but you know him best as Mel Cooley from The Dick Van Dyke Show. Barry Denon, he was in the movie uh, Fiddler on the Roof, he was in Dark Crystal, he played Pontius Pilate and Jesus Christ Superstar, voiced a lot of cartoons and video games. Norman Fell, Mr. Roper on Three's Company, that's right. He was in 12 Angry Men, Inherit the Wind, lots of stuff. Peter Elbling, he was in Demon Seed, Once Bitten, Some Kind of Wonderful, Baby Boom, lots of stuff. Fanny Flagg, she was in Fried Green Tomatoes and Grease, uh, she was in uh, Five Easy Pieces, you know her best from her appearances on Match Game. Jack Fletcher, now, he did a lot of TV, he was on Gimme a Break and he played Mr. Wittendale on The Jeffersons. Alice Ghostly, she was in tons of stuff. She was on Bewitched, Designing Women, she was in Greece, To Kill a Mockingbird, just tons of stuff. George Gobel, he did a lot of TV, he was the mayor on the Harper Valley PTA TV series, did a lot of stuff. Rosie Greer, the football player turned actor. He's been in tons of stuff. He plays a taxi cab driver here. Susan Krebs, she was in Tango and Cash, 28 Days. She did a lot of TV. James Lashley, he was in Howard the Duck, The Hindenburg, did a lot of TV. He was even in a few episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Hap Lawrence, he was in Altered States. He appeared in a lot of TV shows. Paul Lynn. You know Paul Lynn. Peter Marshall. He's done a lot of acting, but he's best known as the host of the Hollywood Squares. Roddy McDowell. You know him. He did everything from The Carol Burnett Show to Planet of the Apes, The Black Hole, How Green Was My Valley, hundreds of things. Shelley Morrison. She was in Will and Grace, Troop Beverly Hills, and The Flying Nun. Sherry North, she did lots of TV, Medical Center, Burke's Law, she was in Lawman, a movie with Burt Lancaster, and The Best Things in Life Are Free. Paul Pepper, he did a lot of TV, he was in The Invaders, The Fugitive, and even an episode of Knight Rider. Henry Pollock, he voiced a lot of cartoons, he was the Scarecrow in the Batman animated series, and I remember him, he played Dracula in the Monster Squad TV show. Tom Poston, you know him from New Heart and tons of other stuff. Mae Quigley, she's done a lot of TV, had a recurring role in My So-Called Life. <laughs> I really like that series. Charlotte Ray, she was in everything. She played Mrs. Garrett on Different Strokes and then on The Facts of Life. She's even been on Sesame Street, done tons of stuff. Ron Rifkin, he was in LA Confidential, The Sum of All Fears, Alias, Gotham, Falcon Crest, ER, One Day at a Time, just lots of stuff. 
Sab Chimino, another guy been in tons of stuff. He was in Waterworld, Presumed Innocent, The Shadow, did a lot of voice work on cartoons uh, like uh, Jackie Chan Adventures. Mary Steelsmith, now not a big career, but she later appeared in Weird Science, Hots, and WKRP. Linda Thompson, done a lot of soundtrack work, including something recently for The Orville. She appears in The Bodyguard and Robocop 2. Jimmy Die No Might Walker. Come on, you know him. Uh, Suzanne Zenor. She did a bunch of TV. Uh, she appeared in MASH and Days of Our Lives. Vincent DiPaolo. Uh, he played a lot of gangsters and tough guys. He's, he was in Black Belt Jones, Capone, uh, The Happy Hooker Goes to Washington. Recently, he appeared in a miniseries called Quest. Larry Gelman. He, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, the, the Odd Couple, he played Vinny in The Odd Couple. He was in, in Maud, he was enough. He played Dr. Bernie Tupperman on the Bob Newhart Show. And Joan Rivers appears as a nurse, and her daughter Melissa uh, plays a little girl in there somewhere. Uh, uh, give me a minute. Uh. So, with all of those familiar faces, even back then, the movie should have been a big hit. So, what went wrong? Well, turns out, the movie sucked. Yeah, Sherry North said the script was hilarious, but somehow that didn't translate to the screen. Then she was right. The movie feels a little cheap and comes off as more of a TV project than a theatrical release. And yes, some of that is down to Joan Rivers being a first-time director. So, let me give you an example. In every sitcom from the 70s, the 80s, and into the 90s, there was a certain convention directors would use to transition from one location or time to another. You've seen it a trillion times. Namely this, the camera would be outside, pointed at a building. Could be an office building, an apartment complex, a house, a store, whatever. This is where the characters live or work or just where they're going to be. Then the camera would zoom in on some windows to convey where the next scene takes place inside the building. And sometimes directors use this transition to show the passage of time, like from day to night. Rivers uses this transition several times in the movie, but this is a TV device, not a theatrical one. Movie directors don't use it all that much, if ever. But it's a thing that makes sense for TV because it saves time. So it kind of betrays some inexperience on the part of the director here and adds to the cheaper look and feel often associated with television. So it's a movie that feels more like a TV show. That's on top of all these actors who we know best from TV. Even the theme music was co-written by Mike Post, who went on to TV theme music fame in the 1980s. Anyhow, the point is, as a movie, it doesn't feel like a movie. More like a combination of stretched out skit segments from Love American Style. Only not very good ones. Some of the jokes are okay. There's a few funny ones, and several that simply would not fly today. <laughs> Seriously. There are a few scenes where you're reminded of the Zucker comedies. Uh, something funny is going on in the background while the main characters completely ignore it. But they aren't nearly enough of those 
and the end result is more meh than mirthful. It's watchable, I guess, if you're a Billy Crystal or Joan Rivers or infamously bad movie completist. And it is a product of the time in which it was made, so there's that. But if you want to watch it, good luck finding it anywhere. It's on YouTube. It's never been released on DVD or Amazon Prime. It was put out on VHS, but copies of that go for a lot of money. So you're out of luck, unless you want to sail the seven seas for it. Arrrr, matey. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. I'll be back soon with another video. In the meantime, you take care of yourselves, okay? And if you like this, uh, give me a like and a, a subscribe and ring the thing and fling the bling and all the stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Get over there. Get, get. The rabbit died. I gotta leave town. See ya.